Hello guys, welcome to, to another video about Sensor Architect. In this video, we will take a look at what's new in Sensor Architect 4.2. Let's start with the changelog. You can always find the latest changelog uh, in the Sensor Docs under Sensor Architect, uh, what's new changelog. The biggest changes in the new architect is uh, adding of the ext6.5 and its new uh, components and adding of the CMD 6.5. Also, Sensor Architect container was updated to Electron uh, 1.6, which should bring some serious performance improvements, mostly about save of your project. Uh, when you look at the bug fixes, uh, you can see that the slow uh, slow time of your project uh, has been has been fixed, and it should be uh, three or four times four times faster. So, if you had, for example, project with uh, over uh, 1,000 components in it. It could take like 20 seconds or more to save it. Now it's under like 6 seconds, which is really nice. Okay, I will not be talking about the ext 6.5 new features. You can read uh, about them in the docs when you find the ext docs. Uh, in the was new guide, there is many new improvements to the, to the framework. So you can look it up and check out all the new cool features uh, in there. So let's take a, uh, first new feature. I know that some of you uh, are working in the secure environment and you don't have access to the internet. So you can't activate such architect, which is, so you need uh, an offline license. And in previous version, it was quite a hassle to import the offline license. But now we have new, new form, which can really help you uh, importing the license. So all you have to do is click back that you sign the license agreement, click on the off offline license, and now you will pick the file. And we are good to go. Also, if you don't have an offline license, here is some information you will need for the importing it. Also, so don't worry about uh, this di dialogue. I know that when you are offline, you will see different di uh, startup dialogue. But don't worry, there is also a button to import the offline license. So let's select my license, import, and we are good to go. Yeah, so I click start it. And let's take at the new modern project template, new, new example. So when you will go to the new project, Templates, ext 5 modern, examples, there is new example, modern card list. Let's create it. And this is only for the ext 5 uh, I'm seeing this dialog because I previously used Sensorarchitect 4.1. Uh, you should see this dialog only once when you start up your, your uh, project or with your framework for the first time. So this is my first time of starting 605 Modern, so I have seen that uh, dialog. In the previous version, you would see that the architect interface would freeze up, but now it's, uh, it's quite okay with the loading dialog. So, that, let, me save the, let me save this project, uh, Modern Example. And this project is based on the ext example, which you can find on the Sencha EXT uh, examples. It's called Modern Tutorial. And in the online repo, uh, there are some comments to the code, which might be really useful if you are starting with EXT. So let's, let's take a look at the main. And, oh, something different, difficult. Yeah, you can see that there are comments which are explaining the code. Uh, they are not put in the Sencha Architect example, but you can look it up here online and Go through the code, and you can see how would one implement such such example inside Central Architect, such such app. And yeah, you can see there are some platform configs to different between the phone and desktop. And yeah, the application is saved. Let me preview it in the browser and start it. You can see that we have quite light lists with just some, some details about, about the people. And there is filter. 
where you can filter the people and this is filter for the desktop and if we switch to the mo mobile mobile view that's iPhone 6 you can see that the filter uh, is looking differently so you can look at this up in the structure deck how you would uh, do this uh, there are platform configs and uh, things like that. Also, one new thing is about the view, view model and view controller inside Sensor Architect. So, when you create a new class, it will automatically create view model and view controller for you. And you could delete them, but in the previous versions, you would not be able to recreate them again. So, now you can just click, uh, click right click on it, and create missing view model or view controller, and the view model is created back again. Also, you might notice that we have two new buttons in the CMD output tab. So, this, this, these two buttons allow you to control the Sencha app watch, which is running over your project and is building it each time you save it. So, when I save the project with the new panel, uh, it detects that there is a new, new class and it, it builds the project. But sometimes you don't want to uh, build the project on each save uh, because you are doing a lot of changes and you don't want the computer to build. So now you can click on the stop of watch and let me clear it. And when you add a new component or do some changes and you save the project, you can see that the watch is not running. And when you reopen your project, it will automatically be started for you. And you can again click on step up watch, and also you can click on the restart up watch to start it again. Also, the restart up watch might be useful if you encounter some problems uh, uh, in a code. For example, you will write something which is invalid, and it will be so bad that it will cause the Sensor CMD to crash, and it would not be able to recover from this crash. And in the previous version, you would have to restart the architect for this. But now you can only click on the restart watch and everything uh, will be okay. Restart it. Also, in regards to the CMD, you have one more new thing. If you go to the project settings and to the framework. So sometimes you have, uh, you had some problems uh, in your project. Let's say the CMD was incorrectly initialized. You have some, uh, something misconfigured or anything. And often what would fix this, this, uh, this issue would be to disable build tools, which removes the Sencha CMD from your project, and then enable them again. And this would uh, remove all the Sencha CMD related, star, uh, related files and bring them back, back again. But now you can do all of this in one button. So if I click on reinitialize CMD, don't, uh, don't forget that this will remove the CMD related files like uh, adjacent and uh, other files, config files. So if you do any changes to them outside of architect, don't forget to back, back them up. So yes, I wish to con continue. So this uh, removed the so just CMD from your uh, from my project and a little bit again, you can see that it's copying frame for fi frame for fi frame for files uh, back to my project. Yeah, and the CMD is added and the build is uh, running again. So one new big feature by the CMD new CMD 605 is the support for the ECMAScript 6. So when you look for example in the filter form, you can see that I'm using that. And you can use const and you can use all the new uh, cool features by the ECMAScript. So if you uh, look them up, you probably already uh, know them, but you can use all the new features in the, uh, in the Sensor Architect uh, code editor. Also, the code editor has been updated to the latest uh, JS hint and also all the definitions for the new ext 605 were generated, so if you write some configs, you will get the hints from the latest latest framework features. And by default, the, the code is uh, transpiled to the older versions of JavaScript, 
so you can also run it uh, run it on the older uh, browsers like uh, IE and uh, different ones. Uh, let me look up the documentation for the CMD six five, and you can read about the ECMAScript support, and you can if it up JSON, you can disable the transport the transpiler to use to pr to generate uh, ECMAScript six code. So if you do, if you don't need to worry about the other browsers, uh, it might be better to generate your code directly in ECMAScript six. Also, there is a lot of new bug fixes. So, if you have your, if you know about the, about some bug which uh, really annoys you and you know the number, you can quickly look it up if it was fixed in this version. And also, there were some uh, new configs and uh, new components added to the robot which are missing. Also, there is a lot of new components in the ext 6.5 to support all these new features. And one last thing, there is new warning about deprecated uh, events. So let me quickly create uh, some uh, C2 modern project. And I'll show you how the update process works. So I have my ext 602 project ready. Uh, the project is built and everything is okay. So to upgrade to the new version of Auto ext, I will go to the project settings click on the framework tab and here you can see that there is button upgrade to ext 6.5 now when I will click in on it uh, you will see this, this, this dialog there is uh, unfortunately Central Architect can't help you with uh, all the changes uh, in the code because it can't uh, change the name of the variables or the events in your own code because there is no guarantee that it's the really the code which was changed and it isn't anything from you. So before doing upgrades or uh, uh, in them, don't forget to read about uh, the upgrade guides in the ext 6.5 documentation. Uh, there is upgrade guide which talks about the changes which can break your code. And uh, also you can check out the Appidiff diffs and there is quite a lot of changes which can break something in your application. And what's new uh, in Sessions Architect is that there is some uh, there are some deprecated events uh, in the ext 6.2, mostly item tab. Uh, and Switch Architect uh, during the upgrade will inform you about this. And also, don't forget to backup your project. If you don't use any uh, VCS, version control system like Git and anything like that, it's really uh, useful to do regular backups of your projects. Switch Architect will do uh, backup, automatically backup for you uh, during the big changes if you would like. For example, change the architect versions, the major version of architect will do a backup, and you do, you do project upgrades and uh, all of these things, it will do the automatic backups. But it's always nice to have your own backup when you know in which state the project was. So let me start the, the upgrade. Uh, it can take a while, so I will skip to the upgraded project. Okay, so as you can see, my project was upgraded to ext 6.5 and if you look to the log, you should see, uh, after the upgrade, you should see some errors. So, in here we can see that I was using the item tab event, uh, which was deprecated. And it will tell you the function and in which class it was. So it's uh, it's this event. Now let me on, click on the term. Yeah, it's a tab. So you can find the the different event and change it. Uh, change it. So the new event should be. 
so the new event should be chopped up and you can write the code also this event are deprecated but uh, they should uh, still work so you can try try them okay and this should be wrap, wrap about the new features in Central Architect for the two and you can share your experience uh, with the Central Architect on the Central forums and in the comments below okay thank you for watching